Hey everyone, Nightmare here. Today I got a new game that I started playing called Goddess of Genesis. Um, this is by Zilong Game, the same people who made Lancaster Mobile. I uh, did enjoy this game, or not did, I do. I did play a little bit of it uh, when it was on the CN version through Billy Billy. I liked the gameplay, I just couldn't understand anything. <laughs> just like the same way with uh, Data Live Spirit Pledge. So I wanted to see if uh i was waiting to see you know if it would expand you know um at that time i didn't know it was by zilong games so it came out as a shock to me when i saw this on facebook i believe so i decided to try it out i was like oh crap this is the game i was playing on in the china version like i was like holy crap it's on c and i can it has english my main goal at least was to try it out on c version and see if i liked it with a friend and the way my luck's been going for me with this game as far as character pools i'm gonna stick with c version if it, even if it comes out on global <clears throat> so basically what it is it's a different kind of uh, gameplay compared to language or mobile it's the it's a mm, it's technically eight on eight but it's more 5v5 uh turn-based game the reason why I say it's 8 is because you have you have three supports that you can put with your team. And the way the game works is there you start off the match with 6 energy and each character's skills can cost an energy as you can see right here this one costs well this is her talent this is a basic attack, so of course it doesn't use any. And here's a skill that she has that costs two, and an ultimate that costs three. This is, each character is different. Sometimes none of their skills at all, even their ultimate, don't cost any energy. So you kind of have to work around everything and try to basically build a composition team that works. Uh, PvP in this game is, it's actually really, enjoyable honestly i could say so before i get into the whole pvp aspect and what i think about everything else let me just you know talk about the heroes so the elements are earth which is green fire which is red obviously water which is blue light which is yellow and dark which is you know purple in a sense so as right here you know she has shadow and of course you have fire beats raw earth earth beats water water beats fire and then ladder darker both advantage and also disadvantage to each other so if you see right here you have element bonus on the bottom the way the element bonus applies is you have your deployed plus supporters so you can have at this case it has three arrows of this element so anybody within the shadow uh, shadow category here you can have three people and all allies damage bonus plus 10 percent now this counts for everybody this isn't just shadow in general it's also for light fire earth and water <clears throat> but if you have five of the heroes of the element which could be all five of your core with three supporters as you know whatever other element you want or you can mix match you know three shadows on field two shadows as support etc etc now this works for everything and all allies damage bonus plus 20%. Each element is different. And you can see here on the element advantages, final damage plus final damage plus 30%, damage taken minus 20%. So that's shadows. For Earth, you have all allies block plus 15% and all allies block plus 30%. Now the block is <clears throat> more advantage for people who guard, which is basically gonna be your tanks. Um, for the case of Lucifer, it's not really her thing, since she's more of an assassin. For fires, you have allies crit plus 15% and all allies crit plus 30%. Now this is good for your your people who can crit, which is your assassins, and also Michael, which is going to be this guy right here. For water, you have physical evade and magical evade plus 10%, and then of course you have 20%. Um, this is especially good for some heroes who excel in evading and some so 
some assassins are good for it, some are not. Um, Lucifer is mainly going to be your crit and attacking. For Hanzo, it's basically her main thing because her physical evade is like highest, you know, like really, really high. And then, of course, you have Light, which is damage reduction 10% and damage reduction 20%. These are going to be good for your tanks and also um, your tanks and healers, in a sense. So, you know, it's some people, even though they have all these element bonus, they don't go with it. They don't do the five or three. Some people have like a mix of three elements in one, which is their choice. I mean, you kind of have to find a team composition. But my core team is basically five fire and three earth. Basically because I want the three Earths for the damage reduction for my two tanks. And I want the crits because of my Hanzo and Lucifer and Michael which do all that. Now, before I go further into the whole stats. Um, as I was saying before, they have supporters. So, since we're already on Atlas, we'll go here. Supports don't use any um, energy, but they do give energy. In this case, um, she gained... You gain one energy when battle begins for her support. After the cast of this ability, gain four energy. And abilities upgrade upon hero limit break. The limit break is basically also on star levels. And also their awakens. Here. Um, it's basically kind of like their skill tree, but it's all connected into one. It's not something different where on Langrisser you have to choose between two or three different uh, classes. So there's that. Um, another supporter that I use that I should show you and the reason why is Vivian. Um, her support is chorus gain one energy when battle begins, inflicts two stack of ignite on all enemies. Ignites, you know, physical defense minus 5%, loses 3% max HP after taking action, lasts, lasts for two turns and it stacks up to five times. After casting this ability, gains two energy. All supports basically should, should be should give you at least two energy whenever they're used so that's why they're there but they're also there to help your core team in a way the reason why i have vivian is because she gives ignites to all my enemies which is good for michael because all his skills rely on ignites in general the only other green i have is medusa and that's because she gives poison to everybody and that helps my vivian because it increases her crit when she's attacking an enemy with poison now another thing combo combination heroes the way these work is in the case of medusa and poseidon they both have to be within your five core team that both have to be deployed at the same time it can't be you know poseidon on the main support or the main core with medusa as the support it doesn't work like that um they both have to be deployed at the same time and the way it works is whenever you use the basic attack, both heroes attack at the same time. Now, another thing is, say Medusa is going to attack and she does a combination hero with Poseidon. So it's going to turn that basic attack into a two basic attack combos between Medusa and Poseidon. They're both going to attack at the same time. But since Poseidon's a water element type, uh, whenever you're... Medusa uses her basic attack and it goes with Poseidon. Both attacks are going to be Earth because she was the first one to land in the. Uh, and you're basically launching the basic attack with Medusa and not Poseidon. And vice versa, since Poseidon's a water type, and if he was to use the basic attack with Medusa, both attacks would be considered water. And you can only use this once per turn. So it's not like, you know, Medusa could both launch two attacks with Poseidon and, Pos and Poseidon can't do the two attacks uh, with Medusa on that same turn. So, you know, you kind of have to choose which one you want to use. Um, another thing, you don't have it, I know Lucifer does, that they have that's also pretty unique is Synergy. The way this works is the same thing like basic attack combination heroes. Both have to be deployed in the core team. You can't have, can't be, one can't be support and the other one can be on the core main team. So with this case, um, it's a Synergy, uh, it's a Synergy skill. And this one applies with Dracula. Both uh, cast a powerful ability together. And synergy abilities can be cast from the second turn. So it can't be from turn one. And it has to be from the person who 
In this case, I know it has Dracula here, but you can only use it with Dracula. Like, Lucifer can't launch this synergy attack. Um, so what it does is deals physical damage equal to 110% of Dracula's magic defense plus 110% of Lucifer's strength to all enemies. Guaranteed to hit targets, this ability removes target shield, then inflicts three stacks of attack down. Grants Dracula's shield with HP equal to damage done. A damage uh, attack down, damage bonus minus 10% for two turns, it stacks up to three times. And you see right here how it says cast by Dracula. That means that Dracula is the only one who can cast this skill or this synergy. And I really like it because it changes, you know, just the animation for it is so good. Like, I was just like, wow. So, there's that. Stats, of course, you have crit, which are good for your assassins. Resilience. Wait, we'll just go here. HP, you know, hero. Of course, everybody knows that. Strength, which is your physical damage or healing dealt. Intellect, which is, of course, magic damage or healing dealt. Physical damage, of course, physical damage taken reduction. Higher. Magic M defense, which is magic defense. Speed decides the order of the action during each turn. Heroes with higher speed will take actions earlier. Crit, which is going to be your chance to deal additional damage upon landing a critical strike, deals 1.5 times damage. Resilience reduces chance of receiving critical hits. Block reduces damage taken by half to pop upon a, su a successful block. Pan, which is reduces the chance of, be of attacks being blocked. Uh, accuracy, of course, increases chance of hitting the targets. Physical evade reduces the chance of getting hit by physical attacks. And magic evade, you know, reduces chance by magic attack. Crit damage increases damage and healing done upon landing a critical strike. And yes, apparently healing can be critical, so keep that in mind on this game. Crit damage reduction reduces damage taken from critical strikes. PvP damage, of course, um, it's uh, PvP reduction, which is all only towards PvP based. So those are yours. Those are, you know, the core stats that everybody has. Each person's stats are um, independent. They're all unique and, you know, not everybody's going to have the same stats when they first come out, of course. So you have your debuffs, which is Ignite, Freeze, which is Cane Attack, Cane Counter Attack, Evade and Resilience drops to 0% for one turn. Accuracy decreases the target's level as much higher than caster's level. Petrify, Cane Take Action, same thing with Freeze. Poison, Magic Defense Reduction minus 5%, loses 3% max HP after taking action, stacks up to 5 times. Um, sleep, which is, you know, can't take action. Evade, accuracy, and resilience drop to 0%. Effect is cancelled after taking damage. So, you know, if they're asleep and then someone hits them, you know, they wake up. So you kind of get to keep in mind on that one. Um, stun, can't counterattack. Evade drops to 0%. Resilience and block drop by half. Last for one turn. Charm, attack minus 5%. Stacks up to 5 times. Taunt, can only launch t single target attacks on the caster of Taunt. Now, if you use AoE attacks, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can't, uh, it's not going to really matter on the time. And you have your reductions for these. One thing it doesn't say is stealth. So, stealth works uh, is basically something that they give themselves. And basically the way stealth is, is they can't be targeted for single target attacks. I don't know why. Doesn't even say it here. Hmm. I know she answers stealth. Uh, can't be targeted for one turn. So, let's say you're doing a 1v1. Hanzo uses her ultimate, she goes stealth. That other person can't make a turn even with support. Unless the support is something that they had they could do themselves or they have to target their own allies. So you're basically getting a free turn because of stealth if it's a 1v1 situation or it's 2v1 and the thus one person, you know, goes stealth. So stealth can be pretty good. Um, for assassins, it's like really great technique to have and then of course you have their biographies you know same thing like Lengrisser um these 
you know, kind of like same thing like Grisser, you know, you have to farm the mats, upgrade them. Now, the gear is exactly like like Grisser's, and I mean that by, as you can see, the strength and the physical evade, the classes that it can be applied on. Um, upgrade to level 50 to level up trait. It's the same thing. You know, you have your trait right here crit dam crit plus five percent crit damage plus 14 percent prefix i'll get to prefix in a bit rebirth is whenever it, i haven't even gone to rebirth so i can't really get into it but it should say right here upgrade gear to level 60 to get rebirth and then it's another five percent i'm guessing so it will be crit at five or whatever the max is for crit and crit damage plus 5% and I'm guessing this also increases so of course you have your weapon your helmet your armor and your trinket which on Lingrisser mobile was accessory now then I was gonna get into oh yeah not that one not that one this one or actually let me go into my backpack and show you what's different. So here I have a regular Horn of Judgment. That's at level 70. Um, this was already 6 star, so I was able to go all the way up there to, you know, up it to 70. Now, you have Horn of Judgment, and then you have something called a Rapid Horn of Judgment. The stats are still going to end up the same, you know, the core stats. But, you have this Rapid which grants speed plus 10. And there's many of these. They have... I know they have Brutal. Which is this. Brutal gives crit plus 10% which is good for your assassins, of course. They have other different kinds. Of namings for them. So, I mean, you could get a regular five Roaring Stars, which is this one, which isn't bad, it's good. But then you have a Brutal, which gives crit plus 10%, which is good for assassins. So not only are you trying to get accessories, you're also trying to get the naming on it right, which is good. It has diverse, it's more diverse. I like it. Um, it's something different, you know, compared to Langrisser. You have artifacts, which are... Do they have artifacts on the Grisha? No. There was another game that has something similar. Um, they basically go off the Chinese Zodiacs. So... You have Aquarius. He increases healing effect, including Leech, by 5%. I thought it was just 5% in general, but... Who has Leech? You have Leech? If you have a set, which is 12... Uh, it increases by 20% and he, the 12 goes off of that little star right there and you see how he, these have four and then if I wanted to switch it this one has two so you kind of want like a four on every single one these don't have like the uh, item effects from or the gears of brutal and etc so I don't have any Piscus, but I have Ares, you know, damage reduction, Taurus don't have any, Gemini's, casting abilities, 10% chance of not consuming an energy, and so on and so on. I find this really good, because it also gives you stats, and it also, you have to kind of like pick the, the ones that you want specific for each character. Now, Grissom Mobile had something similar, but it wasn't as, in my opinion, as good as this is, so there's also that. And then you have perks. Each character has their own different perk. Um, for the first two, you'll see our Ghost Hand, which is the same for Assassins. The only thing that changes, Soul Absorption is the same thing. The only changes is the Ghostly Phantom and to survive on Hanzo, and Ember and Rampage, which changes on Lucifer. You can only equip one at a time. So kind of be careful on which one you want right now I have ghost 10 because I find it better than ember um, after I probably up it or upgrade her perks I'll probably mostly do rampage instead 
So that's the way the heroes works. The teams you can have up to five different ones. Of course, it tells you right here your my presets and the way it is right now. So now the one gripe I have about this game is the banners. See, you have like a uh, like like Racer Mobile did. They have rate of banners. And you're able to use, you know, what was it, Trinity Vouchers or Gems for any banner. It didn't really matter if it was a Rado banner, regular banner, collab banner, anything. But on this game, it's different. You have to use something called Genesis tickets. And you can only get these through the events or spending real money on it. You can't get, um, that's the only two ways. You can't get it by doing story or anything else. It's by certain events that come out and by spending money uh, this is the only thing that I wish didn't that didn't have in the game um, you know a lot of people you know they're like oh I want this character I want this character and it's a radio banner but I have to spend money or I have to wait for an event and you know the events aren't gonna give you enough to say get a guaranteed drawing of the character so I mean that's the only thing I hate about it um, so the race is 2.2% for SSR 25% well 20 SR doesn't really matter unless you're doing single pulls I mean you're guaranteed one thing I do like about it though is on the gears for Langrissa Mobile you didn't have a guaranteed multi draw and get a guaranteed SSR on this game you do and that's just by regular tickets that you can farm to story and other you know paying with real money easily get these um, destiny turrets and so this was a change in the right direction for the SSR gears. Um, I really enjoy this. This is something I really, really enjoy. And you could go through here in the preview, see what gears uh, you could get in there. Click on it, tells you what it is, the abilities, the trace, and everything. So, I mean, the gear summoning, I enjoyed it. That's something I was not expecting for any, any game, honestly, a matter of fact. Um, one thing that they did add yesterday was a bounty order. Bounty order is basically, I mean, come on, if you haven't played, um, I believe I've told it off in Data Life Spirit, Ble Spirit Pledge, which was like the date pass, kind of like a battle pass to like PUBG, uh, Modern Warfare, every Fortnite, the way they do it, you know, you complete quests, um, you get XP, that XP goes towards leveling this up, and then you get all these rewards, and for me, I think this is good, even even for free. You know, you get two Destiny turrets right here. You get Awakening materials, you get character shards, um, SSR gym packs, um, star stones. You know, I mean, even for free, that's honestly not bad. But of course, if you're willing to spend money, you know. I don't know what the key of the Fallen Angel is or the key of the Seraph. I have, I have to wait till I get there to tell you. <laughs> but um, even for paying for it yourself, I mean, you get some good stuff. Um, the key of Fafner, how do I, how, how, I, I don't know. Um, you have some other stuff. Fighters Overture material required for upgrading your sync level. Um, so I guess this increases your... I'll, I'll go over the sync level in a bit. I thought it gave you a weapon, but it gives you also this old and I require for oh for five star gear ascension and gear rebirth. So right now apparently they're gonna be focusing on Isabella for the shard collection on this one. And level ten you get an SSR uh, weapon. So I mean that's not bad. Here you get an SSR gear, any kind. And the prices for it, um, you can use kind of expensive to do it. I don't recommend it, just farm it. Um, here, unlock 50 special rewards for $10.06, get an exclusive portrait frame, or you could do the 1523 and you instantly reach level 20. It's your choice. Um, I mean, it's pretty good. You get a banner here, or you get a portrait, and then you, the portraits are here. Um, where is it? Swap. Avatars go on your lock through whenever you unlock the character and you have your portrait frames here These two can only be unlocked through like uh, the world arena um, So here's your little perk page you know, guardian warrior assassin mage ranger priest go here 
these are all met. Um, you know, this increases all your stats for every character within that category, and this is how you unlock their other perks. Um, not every character can use the same perk. For here, it's Valkyrie and Marco Polo. They could only do this one if they wanted to. The other thing is packs. The packs are kind of like the... What was it? The intimacy level? Or what was it? It was something that was on Langrissa Mobile. This one's downtoned a lot because whenever you upgraded it, you know, they were able to do special, uh, different sayings. You're able to see more of their biography. The biography stays the same, it's just you don't hear other voice lines that you could on Langrissa Mobile. That's the only thing that died down on this game. But, um, let me see who isn't leveled all the way. So for Tamamo, each one stays the same. The first one's HP, physical defense, magic defense, strength and intellect, and then all stats. These are all the same. And reaching it is all the same. Here we'll reach Awakened Tier 5 to unlock the Soul 20, Soul Level 20. Oh no. And then you have to reach level 20 in Infinity. Um, there's just like Langrissa Mobile, there's a place to where you can farm all the gifts and then send it to them. This one's called Phantom of the Opera. And the one thing I like about this game, though, is since I am trying to level up Valkyrie, you can always farm these cups. And I could get the Infinity Chest and just keep going and hopefully get some SSR gems, but I'd rather just work on everybody first on their Infinity and then do the chest. Um, you can only buy 10 character shards. And just refresh this every day but you only do two at a time which was which was kind of like the same for langrissa mobile when new ssrs came out you could only able to do two shards at a time this one it's for everybody even the old unit so i mean they made some changes here and there compared to it and then you have your your main character you know just put whatever um the way the the world arena is basically like it's actually pvp it's not pvp a versus you know it's not you doing ai or auto do ai versus ai so world arena is basically kind of like the same thing through you know you're actually moving the characters you're actually deciding which ones to do which actions to take what to do and everything and etc so i mean the other thing i like about this game it goes off of heroes for, or not heroes people from different uh, mythologies, you know, different eras. You have Lucifer, Valkyrie, um, Venus, you have Dracula. Uh, you have a Jester. You have Little Red, which is Little Red Riding Hood. Medusa. You know, it's Loki, Abe no Seme, Pandora. It's just so many people from different eras and mythologies and just mixes it all into one. So that's one thing I like about this game a lot. So for now, if you want to, if you want to play this game, I would say give it a uh, give it a shot. I downloaded my game through Tap Tap and then just search up uh, Goddess of Genesis on there. Um, as far as I know, global, I have no idea. I know they said that they're trying to see how well this game does for as far as the C version. They do add servers every now and then, so you're not always stuck behind. I am on Ancient Ruins server, so if y'all want to join, you know, I could add people from different servers too. It's not just one, you know. So I mean, if you guys want to give it out, I would say rec I would recommend it. Um, try it out, see how it is, see what you guys think. Um, try to. You know, if you want to spend money on it, go ahead. I'm not going to be moving from C server. I'm staying. Even if a global comes, I'm staying here. You know, I'm enjoying this game. I I already have a Valkyrie 6 star. I got her costume. See, this is, you have to get her 6 star in order to get this costume. This is a limited time event. I don't know if the costume will come back. You know, this is her regular one. Um, it's funny because it's like my friend said, it kind of reminds me of Saber from Fate Stay Night series. And then when I saw this costume, I was just like, it's kind of like Saber Alter now, you know? It's like, <laughs> I don't know if they might take, if they might do that more and more often. I don't know. Um, I do know that there is going to be a costume, a summer swimsuit costume for Merlin 
I don't have Merlin yet. I'm only missing like two SSRs, I think. So um, go ahead, give it a try if you want. You know, like I said, I download through Tap Tap. Try it. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, I also will be um, probably doing more videos on this. I do enjoy it. I may even just stream it on Twitch. If you haven't followed me on Twitch and would like to, um, you don't have to. Uh, I will leave my the link in the description below. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching guys. See you guys on the next one.